This morning at an early prayer breakfast Bible study, an older brother gave me a gentle rebuke to uh, get some physical exercise. He said, go for a walk. It's a beautiful day today and you would do well to take a little walk. And Well, you know me, I'm not much into uh, physical exercise. Shame on me. But it made me think about the scriptures in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, that say, exercise yourself to godliness, for bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable to all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. And the word here, to exercise, is familiar to us. It's the word from which we get our word gymnastics, gumnazo. It's the idea of stripping down, getting rid of anything extraneous so that I can fully apply myself to godliness. Anything that gets in the way of the life of God being manifest in my soul, it's too, too much. It's too much. It's burdening me. It's keeping me back from winning the race. And so this little word is a good word for us. But I was actually thinking in a little story today about a, another verse. It uses a little different Greek word, but the same basic idea to train oneself. And the King James version of that, Acts 24, 16, Paul says, Herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. And uh, it caused me to remember an incident. I went to visit my grandfather. At that point, he was uh, about 94 years old, a couple of years before he went to heaven. Mind still sharp, still full of the joy of the Lord, full of love for God's people and for his word and he was a contented old man, didn't have a wrinkle on his brow. And primarily, I think, because he didn't let things linger. He set things right. He would sit down with you and say, look, I think we have a problem. Let's talk about it. Let's fix it. And that was his style. Well, he was reclining one day when I went in and I said to him, Grandpa, what are you thinking about? He said, well, son, I've just been going over my life and try to think about if there was anything I needed to set right before I met the Lord. I said, well, how, how's it doing? He said, well, you know, back during the Depression years, he had a little grocery store and butcher shop. He said, during the Depression years, a, a fellow came to me and sold me some chickens. And, you know, the price was just too good. I think maybe he stole those chickens. And I thought to myself, a man 94 years old, going back over his life and had to go all the way back to the Great Depression, 29 or 30, to think about something that might still be on his conscience. Notice the scripture says, I'm exercised, I Again, this idea, I, I want to strip myself down of anything that would give me an offended conscience. Why is that such a big deal? Because the conscience is the connection between my spirit and the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit of God touches my conscience, the scripture warns against having a, a conscience that has been seared that has been made insensitive, to have a sensitive conscience so that anything that would be an offense to God or towards men. Now, this doesn't mean that I'm constantly living my life worried about what people think, but that I want to live in such a way that I'm blameless. Blameless is not sinless, but blameless means that I take seriously my influence in the world. And if I've done something to offend another person, I want to set it right. I'm not going to ignore it. I'm not going to deny it. I want to get it clear. 
So may the Lord encourage us. Notice what he says here. I exercise myself. I train myself in this skill. I make this a regular habit, an, an inventory of the soul, to always have a conscience void of offense, a clear conscience towards God and towards men. May the Lord help us if somebody comes to sell us chickens. No, <laughs> in every circumstance of life to say, I want this to wear well. Whatever I'm doing, whatever I'm saying, I don't want it to be offensive down the road. I don't want it to be something I look back on with chagrin or with shame. Help us to live always with that in view. Say, Lord, I want you to have happy thoughts towards me, and I want to have happy thoughts. I want to live with a conscience void of offense. That's one aspect of being exercised to godliness. In fact, it's the, the bell weather. It's the, it's the warning system that God has built within us so that we might live godly in this present day.